Welcome to Z Classroom. If this is your first time sculpting inside of ZBrush, or you have been using ZBrush but can't seem to find a basic sculpting workflow of your own, this video series is meant to focus on introducing some of the basic primary tools, methods, and techniques necessary to not only getting comfortable with sculpting, but will also give you a basic set of skills that you can use to get started. We're going to avoid some of the technical features that come with a more advanced knowledge of ZBrush as well as 3D modeling, and instead point you in the right direction to getting started on your own art projects. Now, this series was created on a PC computer on a Windows operating system. Therefore, will be a minimal amount of difference between the keyboard commands in comparison to those on the Macintosh environment, and we'll discuss any of these features as we move through the sculpting process. To start off, we'll quickly be covering the default interface and a few basic brushes used for sculpting, as well as navigation controls and general workflow techniques to help you on your journey to making art with ZBrush. Okay, so you've just launched ZBrush, and at startup, you're presented with essentially a blank canvas, which is what we call the document. Now, we also have this drop-down menu. This menu is called Lightbox. Lightbox is a quick access file directory where we can find default projects, tools, brushes, and all kinds of goodies to experiment with. Most importantly for us, we need to load a basic sculpting project to jump right into the sculpting process. Now, Lightbox opens automatically each time we launch ZBrush. It can be opened or closed by either clicking the Lightbox button here or pressing the keyboard shortcut, which is the comma key. Press the comma key to close and open Lightbox. Now let's navigate to our default sculpting projects by clicking on the project tab here. We can click and drag left and right to move through the Lightbox menu. To get started, we're going to launch the Dynamesh 128 project. To launch a project from Lightbox, double click the Dynamesh 128 icon. This will load the Dynamesh project with a basic sphere. This project is here specifically for you to jump right in and get sculpting. So think of this sphere as your own personal ball of clay. Now that we have our project ready to go, let's get right into the sculpting brushes and talk about how to use them to apply to the surface. The default brush we have loaded in the brush palette is called the standard brush. Let's take a closer look at how this brush works. Adding sculpture detail to the mesh is as easy as clicking and drawing with your pen or mouse on our ball of clay. To subtract or carve into the surface, hold the Alt key and draw on the mesh. You can see how easy it is to build up and then carve away by adding and subtracting by pressing the Alt key on the keyboard. To smooth the sculpt, hold the Shift key and click and draw over the areas we have sculpted in. This will smooth out those details. Think of the Shift key as the eraser. As we continue to hold Shift and draw over these areas, we can continue to smooth out those details. Now, if at any point we need to undo or redo an action, ZBrush will store our sculpting history. To undo our sculpting actions, press Ctrl-Z on the keyboard. We can continue to press Ctrl-Z to undo. For those of you on the Macintosh, press Command-Z to undo. To redo our sculpting actions, press Ctrl-Shift-Z. This will redo any previous undo actions. And for those of you on the Macintosh, press Command-Shift-Z to redo those sculpting actions. Now, alternatively, we can use the interactive undo selector here at the top of the document. Simply click and drag on the gray undo history timeline to view the entire sculpt. So we've covered the basics of just sculpting with the standard brush. Now, of course, in order to really get in here and have some fun with sculpting, we need the ability to get up close and personal with our ball of clay. So that means panning, rotating, and scaling our mesh. Now, the first thing I want to do is start rotating and moving around the mesh for more visibility of the entire surface in the round. To rotate around the mesh, hold right-click on your mouse or pen over the canvas and drag in the direction you would like to rotate. While rotating around the mesh, press the Shift key on the keyboard to lock the model to the closest orthographic view. 
So this means front, side, top, back. If we continue to hold right click on our mouse or pen and release the shift key, we can now continue to rotate around the mesh freely and then again press the shift key to lock to these different orthographic views. In order to scale closer to the mesh, press and hold the control key. For those of you on the Macintosh, press the command key on the keyboard and then click and hold the right click button on your mouse or pen and drag your cursor downwards to scale closer to the mesh. To scale further away, drag your cursor upwards. If we hover our cursor over a target area on the mesh itself, we can scale into that specific area. So hover your cursor over any area on the mesh and press and hold the control key or command key for those on the Macintosh. Then hold right click and drag up and down to scale in and out. So scaling in with our cursor hovered over the mesh itself makes it quick and easy for us to scale right up to an area that we want to focus our sculpting efforts. To pan left, right, up, or down from the current viewpoint, press the Alt key, then hold right click on your mouse or pen, and drag in the direction you would like to pan the scene. When combining all three navigational options, we can rotate to a different angle, pan to the desired location, and scale to focus on a target area for sculpting. Okay, now that we're sculpting and navigating around in our scene, let's take a closer look at the basic brush settings to adjust our sculpting brushes further. So I'll scale closer to the mesh here by pressing Control or the Command key on the keyboard, right clicking on the mesh, and dragging my cursor down. To adjust the draw size of the brush, click the draw size slider here and drag the slider to adjust the size of the brush. Now additionally, to make things a bit easier, press the S key on the keyboard and this will open up a quick access draw size slider wherever your cursor is located on the screen. If we place our cursor in various places in the canvas and press the S key, you can see that the draw size adjuster will pop up directly in front of my cursor. So this can save a great deal of time from navigating up and down to the draw size slider here. Next, let's take a look at the Z intensity slider. So the Z intensity slider located here controls the intensity of the brush stroke. To access the slider hotkey, press the U key on the keyboard to make quick adjustments. So let's go into a different area and lay down a few more brush strokes. So remember pressing the U key on the keyboard to adjust the Z intensity slider quickly. If we continue to raise the Z intensity, you can see the difference between the brush strokes when applied to the surface. The higher the intensity for the brush stroke, the more it will add to the surface and also subtract from the surface when pressing the Alt key. And lastly, to adjust the fall off of the brush stroke, we can adjust the focal shift slider here. To quickly access the focal shift slider hotkey, press the O key on the keyboard. So you can see if we adjust the focal shift slider back and forth, you'll see there's an inner focal shift radius, this little circle here in the center. This will essentially adjust the focus of the stroke to be further away from the center of our brush or closer to the center. Adjusting the focal shift slider to a negative value and applying the brush to the surface, you'll see that the brush has a broader stroke with very little fall off. Adjusting the slider to a positive value and applying to the surface, you'll see that the brush stroke has a tighter and finer line. Okay, so that covers the basics of adjusting the selected brush. So let's move on to take a look at some of our other brushes in the brush palette. Now, if we were sculpting a character with real clay in the real world, we would have a handful of tools that we would use to block out the figure and then move on to other tools to use for redefining the shapes and then finally adding the finishing details. So the same general rules apply with digital sculpting and as such, we'll be focusing on just a few core set of brushes along with the standard brush. One of these core brushes is called the clay buildup brush. To access more brushes, open up the brush palette by clicking on the brush icon here. Now this is our brush palette, and as you can see, it's full of all different kinds of brushes. 
These brushes are organized in alphabetical order. At the top of the menu, you'll see the clay buildup brush, which is sitting in our Quick Pick menu. Click on the icon to switch to the clay buildup brush. The clay buildup brush application on the surface is a bit different than the standard brush. If I go in here and start adding a few strokes, you can see it gives a nice clay texture to the surface and will also build up larger volumes. So this is an excellent brush to use for building up larger shapes and forms, as well as carving away, while also adding a natural clay-like surface texture. Another one of these core brushes we'll be using is the Move Brush. The Move Brush will be a crucial asset to use as we continue with adjusting the form and shape of the sculpture. To select the Move Brush, let's open up the brush palette, but this time, let's use a new hotkey. To quickly access the brush palette, press the B key on the keyboard, and we can follow the alphabetical order of the brushes to find it here. Once we've selected it, let's quickly open up the brush palette and you can see that it's been also placed in our Quick Pick menu. Each time we select a new brush from the menu, it will also be added to our Quick Pick menu for continued ease of access. So as we've begun to start laying in some foundation and landmarks with the clay buildup brush, to adjust the foundation and overall shape, we can use the move brush to push and pull portions of the mesh based on the draw size. So you can see by adjusting my draw size and then going in and clicking my mouse on the mesh and pushing in or pulling out, I can get different results. You can use this brush on target and focused areas, or you can scale out further away from the mesh to create more of a broad stroke on the mesh. And lastly, another core brush to add to our arsenal is called the DAM Standard Brush. So one more time, click open the brush menu by pressing the B key, and you will find the DAM Standard Brush here. Now, this brush has similar application to the standard brush. However, when sculpting on the surface, we have a reverse effect when drawing on the mesh. Now, by pressing the Alt key on the keyboard, this brush will now add to the surface, having a reverse effect from the standard and also clay buildup brush. When it's time to take a break and save our project, we have a couple saving options at our disposal. First, we can use the ZBrush Quick Save feature. Quick Save will allow us to save our projects directly to Lightbox by clicking the Quick Save button here. So if we press the comma key or press the Lightbox button to open the menu, here we have the Quick Save tab dedicated to all Quick Save projects. Here you can see the most recent Quick Save project that was saved. To use the keyboard hotkey for the Quick Save option, press the 9 key on the keyboard. Now, by default, the Quick Save folder will hold up to 10 Quick Save projects at a time. This feature will also automatically save your project every 20 minutes while inside of the ZBrush application. Additionally, Quick Save will also automatically save if there is a single minute of inactivity within the application. So this means if you don't move your cursor while the application is open, or you switch to another application, ZBrush will automatically save after one minute. So this offers the added benefit of making sure your project is safely saved and ready to be worked on at another time. Now, if you wish to manually save your project to an external drive or other location, let's navigate to the File palette. Here, we have the option to click Save As, which will allow us to name the file and then ultimately save the project. To use the Quick Access hotkey for manually saving a project, press Control S on the keyboard. For those on the Macintosh, press Command S. And finally, to open a project, we can navigate to the file menu and click Open, or we can use the keyboard shortcut by pressing Control O on the keyboard. And of course, for those of you on the Macintosh, press Command O. We've now covered the basic tools necessary for sculpting, as well as saving our work. In the next video, let's put these tools to use and do some practice sculpting to discuss some very simple methods to follow. Thanks for visiting Z Classroom, and I'll see you in the next video.